This video is an introduction and review of three Linux CNC controllers that I've used. A numeric keypad, a Shuttle Express, and a Vista CNC P4SC pendant controller. The first control device that we'll look at is this numeric keypad. It's connected to the computer by USB and it replicates several of the keys from the keyboard with standard Linux CNC configuration. You don't have any way on here to change the jog rate. You have to go back to the keyboard in order to change it. So if we were to touch off on this part, on the top of this part, so you come down to the part at one jog rate, go back to the keyboard, lower the jog rate, and then proceed at that slower jog rate. You can touch off on the part using this, but I don't think any of these other keys have a purpose. Uh, probably can remap them. You can home and access by pressing a uh, home key. The access that's affected is the access that was most recently used. Since we just moved the X axis, if we press home key, it wants to rehome X. Likewise, if we press the N key, it will want to set a G54 offset. The plus minus keys don't seem to do anything. It'd be nice if they changed the jog rate. None of the other keys seem to have a function. The keypad is also able to shut the spindle off by pressing escape. There is no emergency stop on here. The summary of the keypad is it's pretty minimal functionality. Having to go back to the keyboard to change the jog rate makes the keypad awkward to use. I'd prefer to use the keyboard over this keypad. The next controller that we'll look at is from Shuttle Express. This is normally used for video editing, but it has some features that makes it nice for CNC machines. It has five buttons on the outside and two wheels in the center. Linux CNC has some support for the Shuttle Express built in, but in version 274, I wasn't able to get it to work very well uh, out of the box. I downloaded files from Machine Kit and added those into my Linux CNC installation. There's still some things that I don't like about the Machine Kit setup, but it's definitely usable. To jog an axis, you press down the button that corresponds to that axis. In this case, this button, the first button is X, Y, Z, and then the A axis. And pressing down the X button, we can move the axis in step size increments. And you can feel detents on this inner wheel for each of the uh, steps. The step size is controlled by this button. Now we're moving by 100 thousandths. And now we're back to 1,000. I don't use the individual steps very much. What I like to use is this outer wheel, where you have control of direction and velocity. And by moving it further, you increase the velocity in that direction. For the most part, the default speeds are very reasonable, but this last position is just a little too fast. And if you were using that with an indicator, you could easily damage the indicator by jogging just a little bit too fast. So we were to uh, indicate on this part and press the Z axis button and just slowly lower the probe down to the surface. And once we're close, we release the outer wheel a little bit to slow down the rate at which the axis is moving. If we go a little bit too far, we just turn it back the other direction and then again forward. Right on it. We could also use steps to do this to get close. and then step the rest of the way. Again, if you go too far, just back up and come into it slowly. 
It's very easy to press this outer step button though. And if you do that, you might be moving in a hundred thousandths at a time and you could damage the probe. So I don't really like this step button. I find it kind of dangerous to have. It, as well as that high speed uh, jog on the outer wheel. Those are things that can be removed from the machine kit configuration file and make this a little bit safer to use. I really like this interface. It gives you a little bit of that MPG or manual pulse generator feel with this, these wheels. And having to press these buttons in order to engage a particular axis. So right now, without pressing any of the axis buttons, when you move these wheels, they don't do anything. So that protects you from accidentally jogging the machine. It's a little bit safer than the keypad where if something was laid on the keypad, the machine could start jogging unintentionally. The setup time was also quite large on the Shuttle Express. Someone who knew what they were doing from the start would be able to set it up pretty fast, I assume. But Linux CNC wasn't very easy to configure for it, at least in the way that I wanted to use it. I probably took a day to set this up and ultimately get the files from MachineKit. That's the Shuttle Express. I like this controller. I would recommend this controller. The last controller that we'll look at is the Vista CNC P4SE pendant controller. This controller is fantastic. Just like the other two controllers, the Vista CNC controller is connected to computer by USB. However, this controller also has an e-stop on the side. And this e-stop is connected to a box that sits between the computer and the controller. And that box is wired into the e-stop circuit in serial. So when this is pressed, while it sends a command to Linux CNC alerting it of an e-stop, it also breaks that e-stop circuit. So this is a much more secure e-stop than say pressing the escape key. There's this large jog wheel. It has really nice feel to it. There's many detents and it has a nice clicking sound to it. So when an axis is selected, it shows the current position of that axis. These two buttons control how the wheel affects the axis. In step mode, moving the jog wheel moves the axis by the step size, in this case a tenth. You can change the step size by pressing the button on the side and moving the jog wheel to select the step size. I found it really convenient to see the current position on display. And if you ever need to check the other axes, it's easy as simply selecting them. I don't use a step mode very much. It has a horrible sound when moving at slow speed. It only really sounds good when you're moving at a faster speed. You notice there's a, a small delay when changing direction. I'm understanding that this is a safety feature. The mode I like the most is this velocity mode. You select that, depending upon the speed, at which you turn the wheel, that's how fast the axis will move. And this is dependent upon your maximum jog rate. You can change this temporarily by pressing the button on the side, and this will change the display to say V over three. You can change that divisor by pressing the button twice, and then using the jog wheel to select the rate that you prefer. You can zero easily. You simply press uh, this zero button, hold it down, and then press the button on the side, and that will zero the axis. So the touch off on this part is like uh, the Z axis. We'll lower the probe down until we get close, and then press the button on the side to change the speed to a slower one and then very slowly lower the probe down. When you get toward the end, just move the knob very slowly. There we go. Hold down zero, and press the button on the side. Now we're zeroed. The next mode is the constant speed mode. 
as long as you're moving the hand wheel, the machine will be moving at a fixed rate, regardless of the speed at which you're turning the wheel. The speed is a percent of the current jog rate. If you have the maximum jog rate set to 100 inches per minute on the machine, you can easily set a desired feed rate by selecting that as the percentage. To me manually facing apart, for example, at 10 inches per minute, we could select 10% of 100 inches per minute maximum jog rate. And we have a nice constant feed rate. It's nice to have for those times that you want to do something semi-manually and you want to have a very consistent feed rate. When a program is running, you have the ability to change the feed rate. These buttons on the side don't seem to do anything currently. I can't turn on the spindle. There's no program running currently. And the program start option doesn't work either. It'd be nice to be able to turn the spindle on and off you can jog the z-axis by pressing this button. You can also jog the x and y axis by pressing this button to go in the positive direction or this button to go in the negative direction. You can turn the machine's power on and off pressing this button here, holding it and then pressing the button on the side. You can go to a zero position by pressing the go to zero button and then the button on the side to enable it. That's going to zero all the axes. It'd be nice to go to zero on each of the axes individually, but I don't see a way to do that. And that makes the go to zero button a little dangerous. What I've used most on this pendant is the axis selection, the velocity mode, the feed and speed override and the uh, touch off or zero button. So far I've only noticed a few problems. These buttons here don't do anything currently. You can turn the jaw glass so the computer can keep up. Under some conditions when the e-stop is pressed the pendant will lose the connection to the computer. And I don't quite understand what's going on there. I think it may be specific to my setup. When the spindle is going, I'm trying to stop it by holding the spindle stop button, pressing the button on the side. It reduces the spindle to the minimal speed, but it never actually stops the, the spindle. The e-stop, of course, will stop the spindle. To turn the e-stop off, just turn the button. And then to turn the power back onto the machine, Press this button and the button on the side. The pendant works really well, Linux CNC. When you get it, it may be pre-configured for Mach 3 and you'll have to flash the firmware on the pendant to make it compatible with Linux CNC. You'll know if it's compatible with Linux CNC because when it starts up, it'll say Linux CNC across uh, the top of the display. If it says anything else, then it's probably not configured for Linux CNC. You'll need a Windows computer in order to flash the firmware. Other than that, this is a really great option for a controller. If it wasn't clear from the video, my preference is for the Vista CNC controller. It's not perfect, there are some problems with it, but the functionality makes it really a pleasure to use. The Vista CNC controller is a bit more expensive than the other options, and if it isn't justifiable, then the Shuttle Express controller is an easy second. I wouldn't bother with a numeric keypad, just seems too awkward to use. If you have any questions about these controllers, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Just put your questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll be back for the next video.